If you were with us last week, you'll remember that we started this series of six with Noah. And in particular, we were thinking about Noah as a person of prayer. He had to be a person of prayer, otherwise he wouldn't have known God. And if he hadn't been a person of prayer who spent at least as much time listening as he did talking, then he wouldn't have heard what God had to say to him. And we were thinking particularly about how our default setting needs to be that we listen more than we talk, that we listen to other people more than we talk to them or talk at them, and we listen to God more than we talk to him so that we're ready to hear what he has to say to us. And today we're going to have a look at Abram. And here is our scripture slide for Abram. God told Abram, leave your country, your family, and your father's home for a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation and bless you. So Abraham left, just as God said, and Lot left with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he left Haram. I sometimes wonder whether we realize how big an ask this was. And um, we just read it over and think, okay, so Abraham left. But he was being asked to leave an awful lot behind. He was leaving his whole way of life. He was leaving his extended family. He only took with him his nephew and his wife. He left behind a culture, a language, things he knew, things he understood. And what's more, he was being asked to go somewhere without being told where it was. I have known people, I've heard of people who've been asked by God to go to foreign countries or to move from this town to that town, but usually they've known where they were going. Abraham was just being asked to trust God and to leave all the details of where they were going and how they were going to get there to him. A big, big ask. Everything for him was going to change. He was going to become a nomad, a wanderer. He had flocks and herds that he needed to look after, which meant that he couldn't stay in any one place for very long because the grass would run out, perhaps the water would run out, and he would need to move again. And all the time, he needed to be tuned in and listening to what God was asking him to do. I wonder how tuned in we are to what God is asking us to do. Do we listen as attentively as Abraham must have listened so that we get those precise instructions we need to go where God wants us to be? Abraham did just what God had asked him to do and he left his home and he went with this promise ringing in his ears that God would make of him a great nation. But he must have wondered just how that was going to happen. Because if you remember, it said at the end of that verse that Abraham was 75 years old when he left Haran. And his wife probably wasn't much younger. That means they were even older than me when they left Haran. And he hadn't got any children. So Abraham had to wait a long, long time before that promise was fulfilled. For Noah, he was told to build an ark and pretty well as soon as he'd shut the door with all the animals inside, it started to rain. So what God said was going to happen, happened pretty quickly for Noah. But for Abraham, he had to wait. Now Abraham, like all of us, was human. And he didn't always get it right. He made mistakes. On one occasion, he told lies. On another occasion, he thought maybe God had forgotten the promise or wasn't going to put it right. So he tried to do things his own way. 
But all through that time, he never forgot who God was. And for all that time, God stayed faithful to Abraham. Even when he messed up, even when he tried to do things his own way, God still kept faith with Abraham. And Abraham kept faith with God. And sometimes things that we've been promised by God don't happen right away. But we need to hold on to those promises. Because the one thing we have shown all through history, as it says in the song, is that God is faithful. And if he has promised you something, then it will happen. And if we have to wait a long time, then we wait. Because our God can see the end from the beginning. And he understands how things have to play out. And we need to be in his timing, not in ours. And just like Abraham, wait on the promises. Because we know that God is faithful and it will happen. And it did. Eventually, Abraham and Sarah did have the son that they had been promised. And that son had sons. And those sons had sons and daughters as well. But sons are what generally counts in the Bible anyway. And eventually, the promise came true that had come. Because God said to Abraham later on in the story that his descendants, his people would be more numerous, there'd be more of them than there are stars in the sky. And that through them, a great blessing would come that would be there for all people, everybody. And it happened, though Abraham never saw it. Abraham never saw Jesus in the flesh. And it was through Jesus that all the earth will be blessed. Jesus was a descendant of Abraham. So God's promise came true. God's word was fulfilled. But long after Abraham had died. Holding on to the promises we've been given is very important. Remembering that our God is faithful is very important. Both Noah and Abraham were people of prayer. People who constantly turned to God to know what to do and how to do it. Constantly spent their time in praising God, worshipping him, getting to know him better and listening to the word that would come. We have a memory verse, which ironically I forgot last week. The children uh, in mini Zoom have been had had as their memory verse Proverbs chapter three, verse five. And that's the one, if you remember, which was trusting in God and leaning not on our own understanding. And this is the verse that comes straight after. And this is what it says. Listen for God's word in everything you do. And he will keep you on the right path. Listen for God's word in everything you do, and he will keep you on the right path. It's important that we spend time listening to God, as well as praying to him. We're going to spend a little bit of time in prayer now. If you're praying, if you're listening and watching with someone else, then feel free to, to pray together, to talk to each other as you pray. And what we're going to think about particularly are those people we know or those people we've heard of who have gone where God has sent them to. At the moment, we're thinking about Mark and Sue Venning who have gone to South America um, they believe they have a call on their lives from God to relocate to South America. And they are testing out that word right now. But we have other people that we know. Don't Martina and Tony. And perhaps you have other people that you know. 
who have gone where God sent them. So we're going to spend a little bit of time in prayer thinking about those people. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for those people that you have sent in your name. Those people who have left home and family, who have gone where you have called them. We think particularly at this time of Mark and Sue as they test out the word that they've had from you. We think of Martina and Tony. We think of Cory as he works in Hungary with the Romani people. And Lord, we lift to you those we know who have moved at your word to spread your light, your life and your love to be a blessing to the people you've sent them to. Heavenly Father, we think now of those people that have a felt a call upon their lives, but now they are in a dangerous place. We think of Christians throughout the world who face persecution, but who still hold to the truth of your word, stand on your promises, and worship you. We think of the country of Afghanistan, the civil war which is still raging there. We think of North Korea and the Middle East. And in the quiet, we pray your blessing on them, your strength, your comfort, your power, your love, your peace. Lord, we want to pray for ourselves. Lord, we want to give you space to speak into our lives the words that you want us to hear, the words that we need to hear. Whether they are words of comfort or strengthening, words of warning, or words of encouragement. And with the little boy Samuel, we say, Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening.
all these prayers spoken or unspoken we lift to you lord for we know that you are a god who hears a god who listens a god who speaks and a god who acts and we thank you lord that in your mercy you always hear our prayer amen <laughs>